team, welcome to this week's episode. Today we're focusing on low carb goodness, in particular a soup, and one that still ticks the nostalgic vibes we all love, but you know, doesn't have that carb intake that can offset some goals we have in the new year. So we are doing a zoodle soup, because we're using zucchini noodles. Earlier I uh, made these myself. It is really simple, all you need is a really cool contraption. It doesn't cost too much, about 20 bucks on Amazon. It's called a spiralizer. Anyway, so to get started, we have our pot on the stove, just behind us. So you're gonna start it on a low heat, dry heat. Whilst it's heating up, I'm gonna add in a piece of garlic. And I'm not gonna chop it too much. Just kind of, you can see those natural oils start to already come out. So I'm gonna go straight into the pan. So whilst you hear the sizzle, the garlic's ready to play. I'm gonna get started on the rest of our mirepoix. So I've got here a carrot, celery, and onion. The finer I chop this, the more flavor I'm gonna get out of it. So the more time you have, I'd say chop it as fine as possible, because you extract more of the surface area. That's more heat, it's more flavor, it's more color. And you get a deeper flavor from within. Okay, so time to carry these guys. Ooh, I'm gonna make There we go, love that sizzle sound. Get the rest of these bad boys in. Look at the colour, okay? So each one extracts a different nutrient. It makes an amazing flavour by drawing out all those flavour profiles. So we're just cooking our mirepoix for about eight to 12 minutes. What we're looking for is a really translucent, soft kind of looking change to our vegetables. And that's where the oil has imparted all that beautiful golden goodness and the extra deep flavors we've been after are starting to come out. From there is when we start building our soup. Come over here to my friends, come over. You can see like the onion in particular and the celery are quite soft and a little translucent. Mm -hmm. The carrot has definitely lost its edge. So whilst we still have a little bit of that oil in there, I want to get uh, you know a few more things into that and around it so it gets into the rest of our broth. So we have here some thyme and some rosemary. You know, I can I'm simply just gonna kind of Take a strand at a time and just kind of pull the leaves off just like that. You hear that? You hear the, that popping sound? Is actually where the green part of the thyme or the leaf has a little bit of oxygen in it or water and it pops and explodes. It's really cool. Just gonna add in rosemary as well. Oil spreads really easily throughout any dish. Uh, and so it's not just there to lubricate the start of that cooking process. It also helps with develop the base flavor. So by adding the, the rosemary and the thyme at the start, there's still a little bit of oil left. We know that's going to go around into the rest of our broth. We're also going to add in a little bit of oregano. From there, it's time to start adding the rest of our ingredients. Now, we're going to add in our tomatoes next. The reason being is I don't want to dilute our flavors just yet. By adding in a little bit of liquid as opposed to the broth, I make sure that more flavor is transferred much more conveniently and efficiently. I'm just going to add in our tomatoes. So by adding in the tomatoes earlier on, you actually get them directly attacked by the heat, which extracts more moisture, which makes the broth a little bit more heartier and a little bit more sweeter, because it removes any you know, excess moisture that tomatoes have. If you put tomatoes directly into liquid, that's a different story, because the liquid is going to dilute the flavor as opposed to harnessing a stronger tomato-like flavor itself. So speaking of though, it's time to add our broth. We've got a beautiful vegetable broth here. All right, so whilst that's going to bring back to the boil, I'm going to put lid on and that's essentially our soup broth. We have a couple things to add in and one of them is this green goodness right here. Yeah buddy! Oh Ooh, that's one way to clean the sinuses. And now instead of adding like minestrone, penne or even just spaghetti or, or any form of noodle, I've got here some zoodles guys. As you saw it's what we dealt with earlier and it's fantastic because all you need is a really simple device. It's called a spiralizer, and you can turn any vegetable into pretty much a noodle, just like this. So not only do you have a low carb option, but you also get all the fantastic extra green goodness you get from zucchini. Allow it to cook for probably another five, doesn't mean more than 10 minutes, and then it's time to label it in and get ready for the company. All right, my lovely friends, it's time for you to enjoy a super soupy soup like no other. Deliciously nostalgic love and noodle soup right there. So it ticks the box of that noodly goodness. It's low carb because you're using, not your typical noodle, you're using a zoodle. 
and it just warms you inside, which everybody loves. If you wanted to add meat or chicken or whatever, it'd be generally with the noodles. So that would be, you know, you want to cook it for about 12 minutes in the broth in a nice warm, hot temperature. That'll cook it right through. For us, this is a vegan one today, so we added nutritional yeast on top. If you want to add Parmesan cheese, get a little uh, Parmesan Reggiano grated over the top. So, if you like this recipe, give it a thumbs up. If you want the recipe, you can see it down below or head to my website where you'll see a phenomenal amount of healthy goodness there just for you guys. As always, I'm Dan Church, my friends, and thank you always for watching. Soon you'll be seeing this in a studio kitchen near you. Check ya. Bye.